my body was in starvation mode so it was hanging on to everything it could it was hanging on to everything it could because it didn't know when its meal, next meal was coming i was starving it i was treating it so poorly in body i am so sorry for that i treat you so well now <laughs> um but when i finally started eating enough food and eating more food than i had ever had before how she was having me eat we kept measuring and doing that tape measure on my waist around my thighs i was losing inches at a time inches eating more than i'd ever ate in my life and if that doesn't tell you something i don't know what will all right guys so today we're filming a video that is so near and dear to my heart and part of the reason why i really love social media and being able to use social media so I can impact people in this way and show them that there is hope, there is an easier way. And so today's video is all about my story with an eating disorder, disordered eating and recovering from that, being in such a healthy place now and kind of just comparing the two people I was when I had my eating disorder and now when I am such in a recovered, healthy place, thank God. Um, so let's just get into it. I'm gonna tell you a little bit of my story. I'm gonna tell you how I recovered. I'm gonna tell you what my mindset is like now and how drastically different it is. I just hope, I wanna, I'm taking a time to think right now because like I just want this video, the intention of it, to be whoever's out there, whoever needs to hear this, um, for them to realize there is hope, to get help and kind of start their journey on recovering and getting to this place of having a healthy relationship with both food and exercise. So that is my intention here. My intention is not to be like, oh, poor pitiful her and get attention for myself. No, my pure intention is to inspire someone give someone hope that it gets easier life should not be that hard when it revolves around food and exercise to get help if you're in a bad place struggling with a disorder eating or an eating disorder so here we go let's get into it so my story i come from a very sports-minded family all athletes my dad played football in college my mom played basketball in college both me and my brother played college sports and so I just grew up in a very sports minded, played sports all the time growing up. And it was in high school when I kind of developed, not really, I, my goal was to be healthier. I wanted to be healthy. I wanted to look like this fit, skinny, just like when someone saw me, I wanted them to see me and be like, that girl's an athlete. That's what I wanted, okay? So it started off not in a malicious way, not in a bad way. Um, just wanting to be healthy, wanting to look like a fit athlete girl, okay? And the people I was surrounded around, I was never um, educated fully on nutrition. And so, you know, in the world of nutrition, there is so much crap and so much noise out there to confuse you. So... My little high school self, as time went on, got to where carbs were the enemy. I literally was told by someone that carbs, all they are is sugar and they turn to fat in your body. Not true. So like carbs were like, absolutely, I was terrified of them. Didn't, didn't want to eat them at all costs. Like I was scared of so many foods. There were so many foods that was like, mm, nope, can't touch that. Like there were good foods. There were bad foods. There were, it was all this kind of stuff. So I was very, very restrictive in what I was eating and it got to a point where i thought i was being healthy but i was eating far far less than i needed to and at that time like i was working out in the mornings having basketball workouts in the mornings then i'd go to school then i'd have weight training during school then i'd have a practice after school so i mean that's basically like a three a day um and i was just totally under fueling my body but i thought i was being healthy because I had no clue like how much food my body actually needed to thrive. And I didn't view fuel, fuel food as fuel, fuel, food was 
specifically and purely only something that like I had to burn off and I had to like make up for. So terrible, terrible relationship with food and exercise. So I was under fueling, I was restricting like crazy. So my body, I got into the habit as time went on throughout high school, as I would restrict, restrict, restrict. And then my body just got to the point where it's like, Georgia, I'm starving, I need food. And it would just basically revolt, go into starvation mode. And I would binge on whatever was in sight. This was when nobody was home. It was like me, my body was just going in revolt mode and was like I need to eat any food that is in sight so it was like this totally like felt like I was so un out of control and would just binge on food well then after you binge you feel so guilty so ashamed so just like want to crawl in a hole don't want to be seen so then you go into that whole restrict cycle again and then you know you restrict you restrict you restrict and how I in high school was I would try and make up for my binges and I would try and over exercise like crazy. So that would happen. Boom, I'd head to the treadmill and try to run it off. Like it was, it was ridiculous. And it makes me so sad thinking back to that headspace I was in. And it just makes me so sad that I was ever in that place. And so if you relate to any part of this story, I'm telling you that's not a fun way to live. There's such a better way to live so continue to listen to this stay with me because i'm telling you that is not a great a good way to live at all and there's hope to get out of that so it got to the point where like i would hit those binges and then like it'd be like i'd sneak down we had a little treadmill in our basement at like 12 o'clock at night and try to like run these binges off and like work off the food work off the calories and it was just rough it was rough physically on my body. Like, man, what a toll that took on my body. But socially and mentally, what a toll that took. One of the biggest blessings of having a healthy relationship with food is you can be such a better friend, a better sister, a better daughter, a better family member, a better employee. When your life and your brain space is not taken up by what you're eating, how much you're eating, when you're eating, how much you need to exercise, like how, like an eating disorder and disordered eating just consumes your mind space. So when you develop and you work through and you recover and you work with a educated professional, that is the key there, and you work through it and you're on the other side of it like I am and you're at this healthy place, you have so much more brain capacity to love people, to just all around be a better person because you're not so wrapped up so focused on your own body and what one little piece of skin is looking like and what you're consuming so that is the biggest biggest benefit biggest blessing i can give you that you have to fight for is getting your mind space back because having all of that mind space occupied you're not going to be a good wife you're not going to be a good employee when you don't have the mind space to be that so that's huge. So anyways, that's high school. Um, when I get to college, still definitely struggling and thank the good Lord throughout that time. I, um, it had gotten a little bit more severe. Um, I hadn't fully, you know, there's different ways of, for me, I started off and I was just trying to exercise things off. There were times where I took more drastic measures, uh, that, I, it makes me so sad like I would do that to myself of like trying to make myself throw up after a binge oh what an awful place to be in and I feel for you anybody who is in that place so we get to college it's kind of gotten a little bit worse because that has come into the play and thank the good lord I worked with a sports nutritionist who totally turned me 180 and I thank God for her and for that all the time. She one educated me on how much my body actually needed, how much I could eat because my body needed fuel. So she educated me like crazy and I loved that because I'm a nerd. So I got to really get educated on what my body needs, what my body needs to thrive, what my body needs to feel good, that type of thing. So we started out we tracked macros at the beginning because one, she wanted to make sure I was eating enough. Um, so it was a good way for her to be able to see, she could log in on the app and see like what I was eating. I would track and log on an app. And so we tracked macros, but 
two, tracking macros also taught me like how much I could eat. Like my body needs, you know, this amount of protein, this amount of carbs. When I'm playing college basketball at this point, like my body needs this amount of carbs and that type of thing. So I learned so much during that phase. So worked with her, worked with her, worked with her. And I'm telling you, I'm gonna emphasize this right now. This is not a short journey. This is a long haul process. You're in it for the long haul. It's not gonna be a short term fix. And if it is a short term fix, it's not gonna last. So devote your time, lock in, and just get in this ride for the long haul because it's not gonna be consistently up. Mine was not consistently up. It is a roller coaster and you just need to be ready for that and prepared for that. So when you find that person you trust you're gonna work with that is an educated professional, don't just find a girl off TikTok, no. Educated professional, uh, you're in it for the long haul. So it's gonna be a long journey, but it is so worth it. So we worked, worked, worked. And then I finally got to that point where I kind of could tell like, okay, I know what my body needs, kind of went away from tracking macros and went more into intuitive eating, which is how I eat now. And at this point, I was like, oh my gosh, this lady has changed my life. I am so interested in all of this. So I ordered the intuitive eating book, started listening to all these intuitive eating podcasts, like got really, really intrigued and interested in the intuitive eating practice. And that's all about being in tune with your body, listening to your body, knowing and listening for when it's full, when it's hungry, what it's craving and just understanding your body. Because that's our bodies were made that way. Our bodies were made to tell us when we need to eat, when we need to stop, but like society has got our brain so warped that those cues and our, we're not in tune with our body. There's a lawnmower next door, so I'm sorry if it's loud. It's okay. Um, I'm gonna keep rolling. We're keeping rolling. So I got really, really into intuitive eating. I highly encourage people to read that book. There is such, such freedom when you're in tune with your own body and your choices aren't defined by what TikTok is saying or what your friend is saying or what time of day it is. Like when you're truly listening to you because your body knows what's best. So anyways, worked with her, then got really into intuitive eating. And now I am at the best place I have ever been at in my life and it continues to get better. It only continues to get better. And yes, there's days where it's like, oh, you have bad body image days. We're not perfect. Everyone's gonna have those, but you give yourself grace and you continue to fuel your body and be gracious to your body. So I'm gonna talk about the mindset I'm kind of in now. The mindset I'm in now is with food. I prioritize protein for sure. Protein keeps you full. I work out a ton. I'm a Pilates instructor, so protein's super important for muscle building, repairing your muscles, so protein is super important for me. So when I build a meal, I make sure I have a protein source at every meal. And that's something the sports nutritionist works with me is like knowing how much protein my body really needs. So thankful I got to learn that from her. So protein's super important for me. I make sure I have it at every meal. And then making sure I'm getting in my fruits, my vegetables. That's a huge part of making sure I have some color at every meal, making sure I get those vitamins, the minerals, and then carbohydrates. Guys, we're not scared of carbohydrates anymore. They are not the enemy, no matter who tells you that. No matter who tells you that. Carbs are fuel. They are your body's number one preferred energy source. So I have good sources of complex carbohydrates worked in my diet all the time. Like this morning, I ate sourdough toast with avocado and eggs. For lunch, I had cream corn, green beans, and chicken nuggets. Corn is a carb. And have I had dinner yet? So we'll see what I have for dinner. But I have carbohydrates basically at every meal as well too. So not being scared of that. And just listening to my body. I can't emphasize that enough. I like know when my body's telling me like, hey, I'm hungry. I know when my body's telling me like, hey, I'm full. And a bunch of intuitive eating principles are eating undistracted. So you're not having the TV on, you're not, 
you know, running around doing errands, you're not staying up, gobbling down food. You're sitting and enjoying a meal so you can fully feel like when you're satisfied. I think that's a big part of our society and in America today. It's like, all right, we're gobbling this down, gobbling fast food, blah, blah, blah. And your body doesn't, can't fully feel when it's satisfied. So taking time out of your day, one that's kind of like self care, set aside time, enjoy a meal and feel your fullness cues. That's huge for me, huge for me. I take time to do that at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Then, what are other, what other my mindset around food right now? I go into a meal when I'm kind of hungry. Like, it's not bad. Being a little bit hungry is not a bad thing. So I can feel when my body's hungry. I know what those cues feel like. And that intuitive eating book will teach you that. And so I go into a meal a little bit hungry. Um, I don't just snack random, like, at all times of the day. No. Like, I'm kind of structured in a way. But it's a good structure. It's a great structure. Um... Yeah, that's really where I'm at with my food. I'm trying to think of anything else that I, how I think about it now differently. Oh, food is not like good and bad to me. Like you'll hear it all the time. Like uh, I don't I feel like it's it's not God and it's not the devil. Like you know, like we're gonna give ourselves grace. I am all about balance. Like I am trying to eat healthy eighty percent of the time, but like. Also, like, if you're not satisfied with the meal, you're going to want to keep eating. That's also a part of intuitive eating is that satisfactory component. So if you're trying to be healthy and you make this meal that's like, mm, whatever, I'm just shoveling it down, then you're going to want to go to the pantry and find something else to try and satisfy you, and then that's not going to satisfy you, and then you're going to go find something else to try and satisfy you. And, you know, like, but if you just ate... A healthy meal that was satisfying in the first place you'd be like all right I'm good so being satisfied and happy and excited about your meals as well is huge and then let's go shift to exercise you ready exercise I made it an amazing place exercise is my outlet it is a reward it is a social activity it is such a highlight of my day it like used to be such a punishment and now it's just so much fun when you look forward to working out and it's not something you dread or it's not something you have to get to a certain calorie count it's purely working out to take care of your body for me i'm gonna give you and everybody's reasons are gonna be different but now my mindset about working out is one i this is a thing for me i want to be tougher than any other chick like i want to different like any other typical chick walking on the street i want to be tougher than you i want to be able to upstand obstacles tougher than you i want to be tougher than the average chick so I love working out. I love the opportunity it gives me to create that toughness and increase my toughness and perseverance through hard things. So I love that. I also love just the endorphins and just the energy it gives me a boost to my day when I work out. It gets my creative juices flowing. And then I meet so many amazing people through working out. Like, uh, I love that aspect of it. So being at this great healthy place is so possible for you so my advice to you is find a educated professional it's worth the money if it costs money it is so worth the money please do it don't be afraid of working with someone and gaining weight if you do gain weight hey it's not the worst thing in the world but i'm going to tell you my story and everyone's going to be different so when I started working with sports nutritionist and she had me eating all this, I was terrified because I was eating more than I've ever eaten before in my life. I was terrified of gaining weight. She had me eating the most I had ever ate in my entire life. And I was losing inches off of my body. We didn't, I have not, I never stepped foot on a scale. When I go to the doctor's office, I turn around backwards and don't look at the scale. I'm a muscular woman, so the scale's a little bit higher number for me, so it freaks me out, so I don't even use the scale. I know how I feel, I feel great in my body right now, I don't need the scale, I haven't been on the scale in years. 
So we, she knew that the scale was kind of triggering for me, so we didn't use it. We measured because she was like, Georgia, I want you to see what's about to happen with your body. Because she called it. She knew my body was in starvation mode. So it was hanging on to everything it could. It was hanging on to everything it could because it didn't know when its meal, next meal was coming. I was starving it. I was treating it so poorly in body. I am so sorry for that. I treat you so well now. <laughs> um, but when I finally started eating enough food and eating more food than I had ever had before how she was having me eat, we kept measuring and doing that tape measure on my waist or on my thighs. I was losing inches at a time, inches, eating more than I'd ever ate in my life. And if that doesn't tell you something, I don't know what will. So again, not everyone's going to have that same experience I did, but if you do gain weight in that process of healing and recovering, it's part of it. It is part of it. It's not the worst thing in the world. And if you're worried for me, I think part of my eating disorder stemmed from, I didn't think I was worthy of love either from a boyfriend, a family member, a friend. I didn't think I was worthy of love if I didn't have this skinny little fit girl image. And the truth of the matter of fact is, is you don't want love from anyone who purely loves you off of your physical body. You know, like I don't, I want a husband to love me for my heart, who I am, my ambition, my drive, my work ethic, my joy. That's what I want him to love me for. I don't want him to love me just because I have a hot body. So if anyone else, their kind of issues stem from that reason as well, think about that. So I hope this video helps you. I hope the lawnmower wasn't too loud in the background. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. Um, seriously, uh, it's heavy on my heart and there is hope. So I will see y'all next week. If you have any questions, don't reach out. If you have any questions you wanna see, or videos you wanna see from me, let me know. And I'll see y'all next time.